I'm John Runyons. I'm a senior lecturer at Oxford Brookes University and I study plant cell biology. I am primarily a microscopist and in the last 10 years I have switched primarily to looking at living cells. So I do a lot of work with Arabidopsis and other plants. I grow cells in culture and I look at plants that are expressing fluorescent proteins so that I can study life processes inside of cells. How does that sort of research, uh, does that relate to everyday life in any way? It does. Well, it relates to life, exactly, because before fluorescent proteins and the ability to use the sort of microscopy that I use came along, we were restricted to looking at cells that had been killed and fixed and embedded and sectioned. And that didn't, it gave us a snapshot of what goes on in a cell, but it didn't tell us what a cell does in real time. So nowadays we can delve right in, we can watch the cell and we can watch the processes that go on as life proceeds. So what do you think the major challenges would be for plant scientists in the, in the next 10 years? The major challenge for plant science at the moment is to feed the world's burgeoning population. And that's something that we're all thinking about as plant scientists. So a lot of people work directly in agriculture, and so they're directly involved with that. But a lot of us, for example, the people that work in cell biology, are involved with looking at how plants grow, what it is that makes them grow bigger and better and faster, and produce more of the sort of protein and carbohydrates that we need to feed the world. So do you think this is the sort of area that you know, researchers should be focused on to make the most impact. Well, I might be biased when you ask a question like that, but of course I think that's the area that we need to focus on. It's, it's mandatory that we focus on this sort of area. If the population is going to double again in the next hundred years, we just do not have the resources as it stands to feed the world, and it will be a crisis if we don't look at plant productivity. So how, how do you think the, um, the plant science community in the UK should structure itself to sort of meet some of those demands? The plant science community in the UK is fairly broad-based as it is. We have people doing pure research and we have people doing applied research. So um, from the pure research perspective, I think it's important that we really get down and understand how plants are producing the proteins that I alluded to earlier, the ones that we need to feed the world. Uh, but it's important that we all work together at the different levels. A revolution in science lately is the genetics idea. We have, we have fully sequenced genomes for all sorts of different plant species now and it means that we have the ability to compare the little model plants that we study in the lab to the great big plants, the wheat and the oil seeds and the things that we grow out in the field. So it takes cooperation across all sorts of different scientists. And do, and do you think that will become something of a world race? Is it something the US or the UK should be really focusing on? Maybe? It's something that we need to focus on, but as, oh, I don't know if I can say first world countries, we have been focusing on a little bit. And countries like China are, and India are now entering the race in a big way, big, big way, big focus on plant biology and productivity. So it may go over slightly, something you've touched on in the past, but how will cell biology help to progress plant science in the next decade? Cell biology, as far as I'm concerned, is the ability to look into cells and see what goes on as a plant develops. So we're looking at living plants and we're able to go in and study life processes as they happen. And that really opens a door for us. It's a way to understand processes of nature that we were not able to discern before we had cell biology of living cells. What new technologies and technological advances are helping you take the work you've carried out in the plant model Arabidopsis into agriculturally important crops and plants? Okay, well that's a good question. This is what I sit and think about quite often, especially when I'm at a conference and I hear people from all these disparate fields of plant biology talking. I think, how can I, as a person who uses a microscope to look at living cells, work with the people that are out there in the field, the agriculturalists, the ones that are growing the plants that are actually feeding the world's population. And it's, it's a question of going from the small and translating to the big. So at the moment, I work with modern microscope technology that lets me look at living processes. And I have to think about ultimately how those processes lead to bulking up protein production and things like that. And then I need to work with the agriculturalists to see if we can take some of the new ideas that have come from cell biology and put those into plants that we're growing out in the field. Uh, just one final question then, which is, you know, given that new technologies such as yours are lowering the barriers to studying agriculturally and commercially important crops, what role, if any, do you think the model plant Arabidopsis has to play in the future of plant science? It's funny, Arabidopsis 
has been the paradigm in plant biology research. It's a model species and it's used by almost everyone who has done modern molecular biology and cell biological techniques in plants. And it's because it's small and it grows well in the lab and we can study it in the lab. What has to happen now that we have the genome sequenced is we have to translate what we've learned from Arabidopsis into what's going on in the more commercially important crop plants. What can we take from what Arabidopsis does into the, into the real world? And it's interesting, I can think of some examples. Arabidopsis is used as a model for tree development. And it's unbelievable when you first hear this, but this little plant has a lot of the same genes that trees use to produce wood. So the people that study wood production can look at Arabidopsis for their examples. Thank you very much.